we, um, what we do have is a number of towns across Argyll and Butte. When I came to um, the authority about 17 years ago, um, a lot of these towns were quite neglected in terms of the way they were looked after, their heritage. Um, we were losing a lot of buildings. A lot of uh, buildings were derelict, underutilised. And the communities themselves had kind of um, given in to the kind of that, that dereliction that was uh, infecting their communities. So we really had to start from a very so, um, small base in terms of that going forward. Um, one of the things was that we had some wonderful heritage in these towns. And the, the, the thing that we started it off with was um, Campbelltown. Now, Campbelltown is a, is, is a small community, about five and a half thousand people on the west coast, of, um, down at the end of the entire peninsula, and only about 13 miles away from Bally Castle across the water. Um, this community was uh, used to be one of the richest places in Europe per capita, uh, with an industry of 30 distilleries, mining, um, fishing, farming, the, the whole gambit of, of, of industry and developed largely through Victorian times. Um, again, though, the place was in real um, state of disrepair. And I think what, what we talked about there was that um, we didn't have a conservation officer in Argyll and Butte. And that's despite having 31 conservation areas and about 800 listed buildings to deal with. But we managed to convince um, uh, councillors on that to, to employ um, one. And from there, we engaged with Historic Environment Scotland and the HLF and um, working in partnership with them and crucially the community, um, we set our first conservation area regeneration scheme in that town, uh, probably about 15 years ago. Um, and that was the initial investment of the council of 200,000 pounds. And um, from there, um, we, we basically, um, um, I think it's just gone now, hopefully you're getting to get it. From there, we, we managed to, um, um, tackle um, about 13 million pounds worth of disrepair with the first two million pounds worth of investment that went into there. So it's a um, um, key, key kind of um, um, start for us. It was our first conservation area scheme. The community were very much quite hostile at the beginning. They didn't understand what we were trying to do with it. They thought it might have been a threat to us. They, they, um, but we soon got them in, uh, heavily on board by creating an advisory group. And the momentum started to, 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 to gather with that project. We managed to tackle a number of buildings that had been derelict for 10, 15 years. These buildings included um, um, abandoned churches, uh, the, the kind of uh, boarded up um, town hall that um, the last speaker was talking about, and various other buildings like the, the Grady um, Campbelltown Picture House. Um, that was a grade A listed building, but was really in its last legs. All right, thanks for that. Um, the, um, there we can see our guy, and I'll just skip it on for you if, if that's okay. Would you just um, move the slides forward? Um, if you stop there, so um, yeah, if you if you stop there, sorry, no, I'll, I'll, there. If you can see, you can start to see some of the context of Campbelltown. I'm sorry, I don't have a, an overall picture of it, but there you can see some of the before and after shots of the buildings that we've tackled over the years. If you go on to the next slide, please. The Daryl Hitchin was quite, quite strong, as you can see, um, buildings in terrible state of repair and blighting a whole other uh, streets. Now, if you click on this, it should be an animation on this. So just one click. Okay. I'm not seeing an animation. Oh, sorry. Will I open the link? It's okay. Just move on to the next one, if, if that's all right, because um, it's just before and after. In the terms of um, this is one of the principal buildings that we talked about in, uh, in Campbelltown. It was the former town hall, and as like many other seaside communities, small district councils were merged into the bigger district council. And all these properties fell into disrepair. Um, key thing about Campbelltown was what, through the success of the car scheme and then through a THI, a Townscape Heritage Initiative, uh, which added and, and tackled more buildings, we also uh, inspired the community to take ownership of things and actually drive forward their own projects working with us. And this is the town hall, which, as I said, was largely abandoned by the council. 
with only one room functioning again. And now it's completely been repowered into a community hub and wellbeing centre with a fantastic banqueting hall that's partnerships with the one of the restored hotels we have in, 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 in Campbelltown. If you move on to the next slide, please. Campbelltown Cinema, um, again, a grade A listed building, again, very much hanging on by its fingernails in terms of this was the community of volunteers that ran it. Uh, there was no heating, so you went in and froze to death, um, things like that. Um, it really, it was a, an old fashioned cinema, it wasn't digital. The animation shows it restored, but basically what it was, another three or four million pound investment utilising the local volunteers, the local people working with the council and us bringing in some partnership funding is now a fantastic modern facility and great facility for the town. Um, and, and it's not just about heritage as well. If you move on, please, um, to the next slide. Um, and this kind of um, heritage-led regeneration inspired a whole um, load of other works that we did in the town of Campbelltown. It's come sort of added up to about £60 million pounds of investment in the town and led us to winning the most improved place in Scotland award at um, last year's SUF um, network in Scotland. This is another example of it. This is affordable housing. And why and this allowed um, the town to re um, reconvene itself through a, a change in, in road and also utilising stone as clad and um, cladding. And that was through an, the heritage element of it coming in but they're absolutely first class affordable housing. And that's what our ethos is in our Gail and Butte. When we regenerate, when we re revigorize a community, we're talking about making sure the community that lives there benefits from this and actually is not driven out by or gentr through gentrification. So affordable housing is, is a key part of our ethos. If you kind of move on to the next slide, please. <laughs> The problem is with these ones, they're, they're supposed to show you before and after, but I'll, I'll try and, um, if you maybe click on that, and I'm not sure if it will uh, move on. A key thing, is another area that we have is Rothsey. Rothsey is another one of the classic doing the water towns like Campbelltown and Dunoon that I'll be talking about later, later on in the presentation. Um, Rothsey has got the second biggest conservation area in uh, uh, Europe. This, this picture doesn't justify it. I've just wanted to highlight some of the work that we were doing there. But Rossi um, was in a perilous state in terms of its town centre. The doing the water trade had disappeared uh, since the onset of the package holiday. And while there's tourism there, it's never really been enough um, from a town of about five and a, and a half thousand people. In the summer, it used to go up to 20, 25,000 people. And it's never really recovered from that. But through the um, another car scheme and through another THI, we've been investing about six or seven million pounds into the town centre um, and things like um, whether it's larger key priority buildings but also shop front enhancements and it's, uh, it, I had a, an after picture there that showed the difference it made in terms of that community but um, if you go on to the next slide and then we're continuing to invest in Rossi and um, in, in terms of heritage, adding, adding features, historic features that have disappeared back into the landscape. I noted the, 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 one of the speakers in the COVID response in terms of we've done a lot of that in our Gail and Butte. We could, I could talk to you about that for a long time. But basically, we've been reinvigorating the street space, bringing people back out, having seating in these areas, having outdoor festivals again, getting... Um, um, pubs and other other such businesses to flow into the street and from that it's been so successful we've been adapting the street with permanent structures and with heritage elements um, to try and make, make make it the town vibrant again and going forward if you go into the next slide please another town um, we have a lot of towns in Argyle and I'm not going through all of them you'll be glad to know but I'm just highlighting some of them Another area that we had was Dunoon, again, another classic doing the water town that was, you know, where people from Glasgow went their holidays in the summer. Um, it had, you know, the usual things of large community halls, cinemas, larger buildings that service that kind of tourism need. Um, many of them are in terrible uh, repair. About 10 years ago, one of the projects I took forward was the restoration of the Queen's Hall, which was a 1950s um, type um, um, building that occupies the, the front door 
essentially of, of Danoon and its conservation area. And from that, um, we've repowered that into a wellbeing centre, which focuses on people's skills. It has the library, it has um, our, our, the National Skills Agency embedded in it. It also focuses on their physical wellbeing in terms of we have things like um, gyms, uh, different um, aspects of it. We have a cultural hub that can uh, host um, conferences or concerts of a thousand people. I just attended a um, Scottish opera visit in Dunoon this week there. And also it's got um, uh, things for children in terms of um, soft play areas and, uh, and other such likes. So we've actually brought back a building that was verging on dereliction back into the heart of the community and occupying the front door into the conservation area. If you go into the next slide, please. Again, that's another example of, of our shopfront grants. And I, I, I can't get the animation to go, but the reason why shopfront grants are so important and something that we've done across Argyll and Butte is it actually transforms how people think of an area, um, um, how, how it can actually be rescued, brought back, how we can get the heritage aspects back re relatively cheaply and move forward um, with it. Um, I don't think it will work if it's in the thing, but um, if, you, if you go by, it'll be fine. Then, um, uh, in Argyll and Butte, we've actually done 175 shop fronts and renewed them with heritage materials in the last two, three years. And that actually has been one of the things that's been noticed more than any uh, by anyone in terms of how it's transforming businesses uh, back into the street. And as one of the previous speakers says, it's not all about shops. These buildings are being converted into services or different and new kind of things coming in. Retail is never going to be as strong as what it was. But one of the things the pandemic has shown the value of independent and small businesses and how they've been done so well during um, uh, the, the pandemic with us also boosting them digitally, which is crucial in terms of through apps, shop local cards and other initiatives that um, are supporting this heritage work. We go on to the next slide, please. And we complement the, the heritage um, work that we do with um, animation. Um, Danoon is a place for events, large events, whether it's through the MOD or, or the Pipe Band Championships or other things like that. Um, so we've created event spaces in Danoon to cater for that. We've done uh, bespoke lighting, we've done sound systems, um, improved bandstands, and I'm glad to see how the pandemic, pandemic stopped that. It's coming back to life and really having fantastic images of people enjoying themselves and user, utilizing public realm improvements and also the new up-to-date facilities that we can offer. We've also got an interactive lighting scheme for the whole town that actually uh, highlights all different monuments, including our pier, the castle that is in uh, Danoon. Virtually all our towns has a castle in it. We don't have walls, we have castles. So that's another example of how we complement the heritage work that we're doing. Next slide, please. And we're starting to um, um, kind of record and get the data that justifies what we do in regeneration. So we're, we're about to launch our Invest in Argyle pages in the autumn that actually details in detail and evaluates the work that we've done, the, the money we've been spending. And you can see another building there that we've regenerated and saved within Danoon, which allows people to live back in the town and also small businesses to take over. But we hope to expand that and use that as our investment pages for the whole of Argyll and Butte, um, because that sense of place is so much what people are looking for now since the pandemic. Uh, Big, big incentives to create business parks it's kind of um, are not as important now as having a place where people actually want to live. So that, that's key for us moving forward. Next slide, please. Just one thing I wanted to highlight in the Drishig. A Drishig is, and Lakelped is where I live, in terms of another small town. There's only 3,000 people that live in this town. Um, this is our one of our latest projects, which has been nominated for three national awards, including in the top five, the top regeneration project in Scotland this year, and also in the top five RIAS buildings of the year, which we'll find out about in a few weeks time. It doesn't, um, it, this was a derelict site. It used to be an oil depot. It used to be called the egg shed. It was not about eggs and chickens. It was actually about um, fish roe 
uh, where that was kind of um, harvested there as part of, uh, many years ago, it was derelict. It was it, the only part of the building that was left was the wall that you see in the background. But that's now a museum, an interpretive centre, and we have plans to use this as the further regeneration of the town. And that's about using heritage to actually kickstart a wider regeneration. And from this regeneration, for example, utilising the wind farm that were built that actually pays for com the community to do work is um, the restoration of both the main halls in the village and also looking at public realm improvements uh, going forward. On to the next slide, please. We're continuing this work in terms of Loch Gilped, in terms of public realm. We're reinventing public spaces and that's a real key focus of us. So at the, at the moment, we're working on the front green of Loch Gilped, which really was a sort of boggy grassland area that uh, my roads and infrastructure colleagues ever complained about cutting. We're going to create an event space that's going to act as a kind of sticky point for the town as people pass through on the main road. So um, improve play facilities, improve planting, dealing with climate change impacts, uh, powered event space right in the heart of the town centre. And that's also linked into another conservation area regeneration scheme that we've started uh, with a half a million pound investment already in public realm and two millions tackling key priority buildings and shop fronts in the town. Next slide, please. Helensborough, our biggest town, um, 15,000 people um, in Helensborough. We, we, we tackled this in a different way because um, uh, Helensborough has got three conservation areas and it's some of the finest buildings in Scotland actually it occupies a south um, facing um, slope, um, largely grand, grand villas by famous architects, including Macintosh. Uh, but in the town centre itself, it was neglected. Um, it was old, it was dominated by traffic. It was, um, businesses were failing because of um, out of town shopping centres in Glasgow and nearby. But we've reinvigorated it and created a public uh, friendly space that uh, can be used for fantastic events. So this is Cohoon Square in the centre of the town. And, and we're building on that success. The town has turned itself around. It's now become a food and drink focus new businesses, some of them winning Egon Roney um, in terms of Hillsborough's quite a posh town, in terms of going, and we've complemented it with other investments in the waterfront. You can go on to the next slide. For example, the restoration of our, 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 our park. This is the um, um, one of the first um, passive house commercial buildings. It's now a cafe in the heart of the park. It's, it's operational now. It's actually real um, heart of the park. And then, um, and if you go to the next slide, I'll, I'll explain. The mm -hmm. This is um, Argyllan Butte's only park, uh, as it were, formal park, um, stacked full of heritage, a grade A listed um, war monument that's been fully restored as part of it, which lies in the heart of the park. Um, the creation of the new pavilion, a revigorization, a three million pound investment in the, the planting, community led, community run working with the council, um, and it's really started to put a heartbeat right in the middle of the town, connected to three conservation areas and right next to a primary school that actually make use of the park uh, for their activities. We've actually, it's going to play a key role in COP26 as a major event and showcasing our climate change work. And it's also just got green flag status, but really it's turning around communities to take responsibility for a park that was really not a safe place to go at night. It's turning into a vibrant place. If you go on to the next slide, please. And just to kind of finish off in terms of it, we've, we've got 148 small settlements in, in, in Argyle. It's a challenge, but another one is Inverary. Again, a, a planned town um, from right next to Inverary Castle, maybe some of you know it. But in terms of the, the, the issue there was not really much intervention. It was repair and actually it was training. And all the initiatives we're doing, we put a lot of effort into training the construction trades and local people and heritage skills and everything which we've got a lot of success with. And in this community was tackling damp, poor repairs and interventions. And we've turned it round into, you know, and, um, where the community was kind of switched off to this, to them actually being quite progressive. And they're tackling the last couple of issues in the, in the village, which is the pier and the, the former little hall that they have. You go on to the next slide. This is the closest thing we've got to a wall in Argyll and Butte. 
It's not very defensive. Um, there's a lot of holes in it. But this is an architectural screen or a bit of a folly that gave um, the council uh, massive issues because it wasn't waterproof properly. We used concrete instead of um, lime to repair it. We actually did a demonstration project here because of the success of the car scheme that we actually did in Inverary. HLF and the Historic Environment Scotland gave us more funding um, to actually tackle this. So we've actually addressed the structure um, with the hot lime treatment, uh, leaded waterproofing, and it's actually transformed the way the town looks and presents itself um, to um, um, residents and also the, the many, many visitors that go to the town. Go on to the next slide, please. So I've rushed through this. I'm sorry about the, the presentation hiccup, but I mean, what next? Um, we've got other plans for heritage in Argyll. We've just started a cars a conservation area regeneration scheme in Helensburgh. We've kicked off the one in Loch Elped last year. At one point, we had five of these schemes going, which is the most in Scotland, um, with a very small dedicated team to take it forward. We're going to continue to focus on place and heritage and improving our built heritage. We're building it into training programmes, but we're also doing a re-emphasis now on people and bringing them along with us, empowering communities to take actual ownership of these um, initiatives, which we've seen in the past, but actually taking more momentum now, taking this forward. And we've got a greater focus now on well-being and community wealth building that we've had before, and that's going to be key for us moving forward. In addition to the heritage, we are focusing on active travel, um, improving our green spaces like you know the front green and Gilped, and crucially embedding affordable homes within that restoration. So when we bring back buildings back to life, we can create affordable homes for people to live in. And an emphasis now in supporting small businesses and innovation and improving digital connectivity within these communities. So we've got platforms like apps and other digital tools to reach a wider audience than just the local population. Another key focus for us is improving our marine gateways. We've just made a substantial bid to the UK Leveling Up Fund, where we're actually focusing on climate change interventions and also the re regeneration of our harbour and waterfront areas to reinvigorate them and give them a bit of an economic purpose moving on. And again, lastly, I suppose all of this is in the context of the green recovery reaching net zero, uh, which is something that we're well embraced in Argyle and, and we're going to be discussing at COP26 in a, a few weeks' time. That's the end of my presentation. I'm happy to answer any questions. Uh, I rushed through it. There's a snapshot of what we're doing, but hopefully you got something out of it. Thank you.